called East Africa Community Geocalling of Ukawazi Exhibitions. Recently, I was elected the chair of the Comesa Business Council SME's work group, and I'm the founder of the SME Africa Trust. So I'm very excited to be here because in my travels in Africa, there have been very few initiatives that have, be have borne any results like this one. And uh, I stand tall everywhere I go all over the world because of the success stories that are happening in Kenya, and especially on the MSME front. This is coming at a very good time that now we have the MSC authority after a very long journey of uh, enacting the MSC bill. And thank you very much in our university team that worked behind the scenes to polish the MSC bill. That was a very great leap, not only for Kenya, but for Africa. There's no country in Africa now that has a mainstreamed MSC sector that has now the regulatory and uh, policy framework in place. Now we have the MSC authority. In the value chain of empowering the small businesses in Kenya, uh, and we have been, have been spearheading some initiatives like access to affordable credit, access to work sites, access to relevant skills. That's where I have an issue with the, our training institutions. The curriculum that are in these training institutions are not in touch with the ground. That is why many small business people do not go for those courses. Some of those courses are too long. They take around three years to, to complete. And as you know, the small business people, as I say, they're, they're the managing directors, finance director, marketing director, father, and a sole guy. If you close that guy in a training for three years, you're killing his business, you're killing his family. The wife will go away anyway. So what I say is that, um, this is the only university and an initiative that I've come across that has real time and connecting with the aspirations of the small businesses. So uh, in Kenya, uh, we have around 8.6 million MSCs. This is none, uh, not including the agro sector, not including the sector from our colleague from Makueni. And uh, I'm happy to inform you that as you continue with this initiative, we are also struggling behind the scenes to give the sector a face. For a very long time, we never had the definition for the MSC sector. We never had it segmented into how they operate. I'm happy to inform you that it is now official that the MSME sector in this country, and I stand corrected from my colleague from the government here, we, 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 def we had a domesticated definition of our MSCs in this country. We used to have borrowed definitions from Malaysia, UK, everywhere, and this brought a mismatch between the interventions and what was happening on the ground. That's why you realize there were so many initiatives uh, targeting the MSC sector, but nothing reaching them, because those interventions were based on definitions that were not practical in this country. Now we have four segments. The first one is micro and small industries, or the Jokali artisans. Most of you know the Kekomba one, the one where they make wheelbarrows. We have around 18 subsectors in the micro and small industries. We have the small traders as a segment. We have service providers as a segment, and we have the agro-based MSCs as a segment. And I was just having a word with the professor here that maybe as the mentorship program progresses, it's important to have a sector specific mentors so that now we start deep diving into the into the into the MSC sector in reality. Um, I want to inform you that um, under the SME Africa Trust, working very closely with the African Union, we have initiated an Africa Small Business Initiative whose pilot project is just about to begin in the East Africa region under the banner of ESC Small Business Initiative. One of the issues that we'll be looking into adapting into the ESC Small Business Initiative is this program of mentorship. In my travels in Africa, I've never met a mentor or so. These mentors, and I note that so far there are around 80 who have uh, been trained so far, I'm looking at borrowing them and impacting the ESC region with the, with the skills that you have been able to impact on the 200 uh, mentees that are here in Kenya. 
I'm also happy to inform you that as the chairman, as the chairman, of course, the chairman of the Comesa SME Work Group, I would like to carry with me a, a small team of the mentors to Zambia so that they can go and share their experiences with the, with the 19 countries in the Comesa region. And I'm also happy to carry a team to the African Union in Ethiopia to share this. We are spearheading a, a continental approach towards empowering of the SME sector in Africa. And we believe that Africa is the thing that is trending now. Everybody is dying to come here. Our SMEs have a lot of issues and uh, they are challenged because uh, in the value chain, and thanks for my interaction with the academia and thanks for my interaction and being a founder member of this initiative, we had been wondering, even after training, after getting money, what happens to these small businesses? They don't go anywhere. We're in our, and I'm not an academia, in our experiences, we didn't know that there was a missing gap. And this was filled very well by the mentorship program. Now I can say that we are complete. And now I can say that this is a very great moment to be a Kenyan. Because the issues that are happening now are great. Um, in the program, I was just supposed to give uh, brief remarks. I just want to say once again that I'm very excited to be part of this process. And as, uh, as one of the initiators of the program, I remember uh, night discussions, uh, referrals to CAPSA, referrals to uh, the associations. And I'm very happy that it has reached where it has reached today. I want to take this opportunity to thank the partners that are on that uh, banner there. A Law and Eblis, Chess Bank, FKE, uh, and the Danish uh, Royal Embassy here. And I want to take this opportunity to inform you that um, we need more and more partners in this, in this initiative. Like the banks, and I'm happy that Chess Bank, I started seeing this logo almost from towards the beginning. I take this special opportunity to thank you very much for this. Please join us in this journey and let's change Africa. Thank you very much. I, I admire the passion that he has for this sector. Uh, up next, we have Catherine Kioi. She's a business mentor from the third cohort. We thought she should, we should have a mentor and a mentee share their experience uh, through the program. It's my pressure this morning to share my experience as a mentor. I, I was in uh, cohort three, so it's not even one year since I was in the classroom. But I want to say that uh, during the learning process, if I start there, it was, the learning is very practical. It's not like a theory only, but it was practical. And after each module, you do an exercise, you share with your group, then the whole class. In this way, we're able to learn from each other, not only from our lecturers, and also we are able also to learn from different business that the various, our various uh, uh, colleagues were dealing with. And that gave each one of us an experience to learn about very many business sectors in the, in the, in the, in the economy today. Uh, what was it about? I would like to say for me, as a, as, as a graduate of a business school, it was very complex business models made very simple to fit in this sector. It was amazing. I never thought I'd really apply a Porter's forces model to a small business, but they were able to do that. When I never thought I would do, be doing IRR or a payback for a small business. Those are things that I, I learned them in business school when I looked at General Motors, Kmart, those big companies. But uh, this was uh, very amazing for me. But one thing that we learned is that uh, in, in terms of uh, businesses are all the same, whether they are big or small, they all start from a business idea. So the first thing when you're mentoring uh, you, are, you are mentoring a, a business is first of all to check whether the mentees understand their business idea. It may sound very simple, but some of them don't even know what is their business idea. So during this, this program, we're able to focus the mentees to identify with their business idea, to really check and evaluate, or even be able to express their value proposition, and also to deliver that value to a specific market focus. Market focus is a big issue for this sector. Because as I said, everybody wants to copy what somebody else is doing. But market focus makes the mentee narrow down 
to that particular segment, so that they're able to understand the segment and be able to deliver the value. We also looked at the business systems that support this business idea. Again, coming from SMEs in a small way, a, a big um, business model, fitting it to a small business, but uh, I, I, it also works as we went through the, the, with the mentees, looking at different things. I mentored a school called Acadia Kindergarten. The mentees here this morning, so I'll not talk about her experience or how her business has changed. I'll leave that to her to talk about it. Uh, in, the, in, the, in the classroom, as again, we also learned the soft skills, which we call the mentorship dimension. This was a critical part of the process, because to be able to help us communicate this, uh, this knowledge to a small, medium size. You know, it's not all the time that you get somebody in this sector who has got average knowledge. Some people may just be good businessmen and women, but may not have very high education. So in, during this process, we also, our, our emotional intelligence was charged in a life-changing manner. Because we had to come from the high of the people who know it all and come to the simplicity and in a humble way to be able to present the same to a small business. We also learn to be good listeners. People who have got knowledge in certain things, they are, sometimes they're not good listeners. But here through teacher Wanja, the one who was introducing us here, you were taught how to listen at different levels. I didn't know that I was thinking from the head and the feet and I don't know the heart. So we learned to listen from all these levels, depending on the situation and the circumstances. But more so learning how to listen. For some of us, it has been very difficult. If you have been a manager for a long time, sometimes listening until somebody finishes the story is a problem. But we learned, and I personally grew in different ways on this soft skill side. The lessons I learned is that the mentor must understand the mentee business well to be able to help. If you go to mentor a business, the first thing is to analyze that business. You must understand it from where they are coming from. You must listen to their heart and their passion on that business. The other one is that you must capture clearly all the business tools to be of assistance. So again, you go to this mentorship program, and you don't capture the tools, you're not be able to help the mentee. So you must be, if you are a student in this class, you must also get the business right. You must also understand the mentee as much as possible. And also allow the mentee to understand them, so that, to understand you, so that both of you can be at ease through this mentoring journey. It's a journey. If you're not at ease with each other, there must be a chemistry. It's almost kind of like a, a human relationship. If you don't get a rapport, you don't get a chemistry, you cannot work along well. So one of the skills of being a good mentor is to be able to create that chemistry between you and the mentee. Because you don't know out there whom you'll find. But the mentor is the one who has the upper hand to make sure they get the mentee at ease, understand them, and be able to move to walk the journey together. I also learned that the mentor must take an upper hand on the process and encourage the mentee so that all scheduled meetings take place. In the beginning, even from the people we had in class, not every mentee is available for, to be available for meetings because they want to close the latest deal or to catch up this and that. They are busy with their business. So really get them to come down and be able to come to a meeting and spend an hour or two is not easy. But the mentor has to handle this, this process. The other one is the mentor must use a decoded business language, depending on the mentee. You can't go and tell somebody this is a Porter's Five Forces model. No, they don't understand what are you talking about. So you have to put that in a language that you never mention that business model that you're applying. So you must decode. And according to the, to the mentee. The other thing as a mentor, we must offer quality time. It is serious business, mentoring. Mentorship is serious business because you are the expert helping somebody else to do better. So you must give quality time. If you, you can't go in a hurry, or oh, we have to finish in the next 30 minutes because I have an assignment. No, you have to feel that that particular agenda you had is accomplished for the day. You must also be professional and you must use the soft skills. Those are the skills how to manage the person. The other one I would like to advise also as a mentor, never take too much that you can chew. Yes, other people are saying, yeah, I, can you mentor me? But I'm saying at this time, I'm happy with it too because I'm also on a need to five job. These are things I do, I do part time. When I left the, the classroom, I had even said I would, ha I would do four, but I'm not able to at this time because I'm, not, I'm a full time employee elsewhere. But uh, all the time, deal with the, what you can choose so that you can be, give quality. 
Once you have the skills, always have at least someone you are mentoring. It's a joy to help someone else do better in business, especially in this uh, part of our country where 75% of the GDP is coming from the informal sector. It is great to be able to see even one more business do well and stand for sustainable growth. Because when the businesses grow, they employ more people, and even the taxman is happy. So it's not everybody out there who can be a mentor in business. You need to be trained. And this is why I would say Indiana University has done very well. We have had people there calling themselves mentors. But unless you have this very critical knowledge, you can't be able to do it. You must have certain skills. Those are the soft skills. Listening, you must be submissive, supportive. You must have ability to assist somebody. You must have passion for this, what you are doing. You must be committed. There must be patience. Sometimes business are not taking off in the first year. My mentee, it was good because within three months, we had hit the road running and money was coming and she was excited. It's not always like that. Sometimes it may take longer. So the, the mentor may have to be a little bit patient. You must be available. You must measure results. Like I can be able to check with the Nyambura, my mentee, how many more people have you added? She says, yes, I'm working with the extra four people. That is, those are jobs for Kenya, and that is good. So you must be able to see that this, what you are doing, is bringing growth in different dimensions. And that is evidence of success for Nyambura. After the mentorship program, <laughs> when, during the Gulf crossing, the van was not in the agenda. We were to do things with her. She would talk about it, about uh, uh, lifting the, uh, the face of the school and many other things that we were supposed to do. And she was to borrow 1.5 million. I want to tell you she never borrowed a shilling and she was able to buy this fund, which was an additional. This is evidence for Nyabora. And thank you so much. That's the end of my short presentation. Thank you very much. thinking she could have left the ed evidence uh, right there. Um, the next speaker, it gives me joy to introduce her. She is uh, passionate about uh, women and uh, empowering women economically. She is uh, Nancy Gitonga. She is the CEO of Africa Women Entrepreneurship Program, AWEP, the Kenya chapter. And prior to this, she was the CEO of FEWA. FEWA stands for the Federation of Women Entrepreneur Associations. She's a trained and certified consultant by ILO, that's the International Trade Center, Export Promotion Council, and UNDP on Women's Entrepreneurship Development. She, her CV is quite long. <laughs> As a, the FEWA CEO, she was the key person in the development of FEWA strategic plan by the Business Advocacy Fund. She's a committee member of AGOA and the Ministry of Trade and National Women Representative at the Women Business Forum in IGAD and Kenya National Chamber of Commerce. Wow. Uh, when I grow up, I'd like to be Nancy. Karibu. Uh, thank you very much. It's really humbling to be here. Professor. Thank you very much for really making mentorship a discipline. We sincerely appreciate because this is really something that we need. And um, I'll start by saying, like you've been told, my name is Nancy Gitonga. I'm the CEO of African Entrepreneurship Program. Uh, we call it short AWEP Kenya chapter. It is a United States our U.S. State Department initiative. And AWEP actually is in all African countries, and it was initiated so that women business entrepreneurs in Africa can be able to do the uptake of AGOA benefits and start exporting to the U.S. market and the rest of the world. And so we are here. And ideally, it's true, uh, working with women is the best thing that has ever happened to me. Because a woman is an agent of change in their own right, in their own communities. And women are very powerful because I'm told developed and developing economies have recognized the importance of entrepreneurship as the engine of economic growth. And women are the backbone of these economies. 
Because in Africa, specifically, 54% of the micro, small, medium enterprises, and I'm sure Richard and Moteti will agree with me, these businesses are owned and operated by women. Women entrepreneurs are key economic actors because they pay taxes, they create wealth, when businesses actually reduce poverty and contribute to the regional integration. Unfortunately, women entrepreneurs are still suffering invisibility. There's a lot of stigmatization. There's lack of confidence in how women are doing their businesses. There's violence. There's a lot of harassment. There's poor working conditions. In fact, I was telling my my boss from the Ministry of Industrialization, we need working sites. The social services network failures, there's so much lacking in finances. Yes, I know we have the Women Fund, but I think it has its own challenges. Technology is a challenge. We need a lot of training, we need education. And the list goes on and on and on. And I thank God because one of the key intervention is mentoring, mentorship. That actually is going to give answers to some of these really, really, really big gaps that are existing within women businesses. An overview of the socio-cultural orientation indicates that women are socialized to think and behave 